Hello, I'm Juan Davis, Chief Creative Officer at KCT and PBS SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LAist on a daily reporter roundup. Starting Wednesday, restaurants in the state once again can only do takeout and drive throughs so no more in-person dining for a while. Elena, you have been following the story. That's right, I have. And a lot of restaurants are very upset about this. They feel like they've jumped through all the hoops in terms of health and safety protocols that the county has mandated. And the evidence on whether or not restaurants present a significant mode of coronavirus transmission as opposed to, say, private social gatherings and those large illegal house parties, all of which are also a problem, there's not really good hard data on how it's transmitted, at least that we've had access to yet. So tomorrow, LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger says she's going to take the issue up at the County Board of Soups meeting because she strongly opposes it. She says for her, it's a lack of consistency. You know, why are we cracking down on this one particular industry sector when there are so many other modes of transmission? It's not clear whether that'll change county health officials' minds or what the county board could do, but it's definitely going to be an issue that they're going to be discussing. We know that LAUSD has been providing free meals to families since the start of the pandemic. As Carly has been reporting, the nation's second largest school district is upping its efforts this Thanksgiving. That's right. Since the district moved to online learning in March to slow the spread of COVID-19, LAUSD has distributed almost 80 million meals to students and community members who are in need. And on Wednesday alone, the district is planning on handing out um, even more meals, 1.5 million. So Wednesday morning, starting at 7 a.m., district staff and volunteers at the 60-ish grab-and-go centers around LA will hand out five meals per person or family member. Those meals will be holiday themed. There's turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, and green beans in them. And those grab-and-go centers close at 10 a.m. on Wednesday and will remain closed for Thanksgiving itself and on Friday, too. A number of historic cabins in the Angeles National Forest were destroyed by the Bobcat Fire this fall. We turned to Sharon, who took a hike there this weekend to check out the aftermath. Yeah, every weekend, hundreds of people hike from Chantry Flat down the Gabrielino Trail to, into Big Santa Anita Canyon, and they pass by a few dozen tiny cabins. Some of them are more than 100 years old. This trail is going to be closed for a long, long time until the fire damage subsides and it's safe to be there. Now, I got permission to hike in with a family that's owned a cabin there for more than 50 years. There are hundreds of cabins in the canyon back in the 1930s, at the end of California's great hiking era. But floods and fires had destroyed most of them over the years. The Bobcat Fire burned 17 cabins, and so now there's only 64 left. And it's unclear whether the U.S. Forest Service, which owns the land, will permit the owners to rebuild. It's gonna depend on where each cabin is and whether it's far enough out of a hazard zone. And finally today, President-elect Biden is planning to formally announce nominations for several cabinet positions on Tuesday. His pick to lead the Department of Homeland Security has L.A. roots. Here's Libby with more. Biden's transition team says he'll nominate Alejandro Mayorkas for the job leading border security and immigration enforcement under the Biden administration. Ali Mayorkas, as he's called, grew up in Beverly Hills after his family left Cuba for the U.S. when he was a baby. Mayorkas rose to become U.S. Attorney for the Central District of California, overseeing the federal government's prosecution of drug cartels and white supremacists in Los Angeles. He started the first civil rights section in the office's history, and that was aimed at investigating and prosecuting police misconduct and hate crimes. Then the Obama administration scooped him up. He headed U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, where he helped develop and implement the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA, that temporarily suspended deportation proceedings and granted work authorization to immigrants brought to the United States as children. So immigration groups I talked to, including the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights, say they expect him to unwind a lot of Trump administration policies and help find a permanent solution for DACA recipients who have faced so much uncertainty in recent years. Thank you, Libby, and thank you all at the KPCC and LA's newsroom. Please stay healthy. We will see you tomorrow.